since we were on the topic of skin, you know, uh, and sun and what's optimal for skin health. So I haven't covered this, covered this in a video. I may though at some point, but, uh, so astaxanthin, that's another aspect of my diet where I've been lacking. And, um, so for people who know or don't already know, I eat fish every day, and this comes almost exclusively from wild caught sardines, um, mostly for the omega three, but obviously also for the protein, right? So, um, there's no almost there has historically been no astaxanthin which can come from things like salmon which also has the omega-3 and protein uh, so why is astaxanthin important well um, astaxanthin may have positive benefits on skin and emphasis on may because there are only a few clinical trials and what i'm finding these days a lot on the uh, interwebs is people will take one clinical study in, in a you know very few people and this spreads like wildfire into this is going to be great. This works, right? I mean, I see that for like just things like hydrogen water and, you know, methylene blue. There's like a little bit of published data in randomized controlled trials, not in vitro or cells. So, so anyway, I, emphasis on May with astaxanthin. So uh, these are two clinical trials. And what, uh, what I highlighted is in this study, and, you know, we'll link to the papers in the video description or the pinned comment. In the first study, they looked at on the left, in which I highlighted, uh, they did a study in women where it was six milligrams per day of astaxanthin oral supplementation and two, um, what is that? Two milliliters topically of astaxanthin. So um, now, which is optimal? Is it get it from oral, you know, food supplement or getting it topically? I mean, I don't know which is optimal probably topical, probably be best if astaxanthin really can make a dent on skin health and skin aging. To put the uh, dose in perspective, I think average astaxanthin, I mean, I got this off the uh, internet yesterday for, uh, you know, to get four milligrams, I think that's per 100 grams of uh, salmon. So you need, you need a pretty decent sized salmon, uh, wild caught salmon, you know, I wouldn't go with the farm stuff. Um, you know, so you, pr you need about 200 grams per day to get eight milligrams of uh, oral astaxanthin per day. Nonetheless, they saw positive effects on skin, uh, skin health related measures, right? So uh, skin wrinkles, age spot size, skin texture, moisture content, which declines during aging. Uh, so, so potentially beneficial. And this was a randomized control trial. This isn't, uh, you know, association. And then in the second study that they did, it was in men. And here too, you know, without going through the data, showing the data, uh, yeah, just going, you know, with the abstract, usually, usually I show data, but for now, just going through the abstract in men, uh, crows, crows, crows feet, wrinkle and elasticity, and then trans epidermal, epidermal water loss, which, uh, water, uh, hydration, skin hydration declines during aging. So astaxanthin was able to improve, uh, wrinkles and elasticity and, uh, reduce the trans epidermal water loss. Now, the reason I haven't focused so much on skin is because it can be, be very tricky because if you're visually inspecting someone's skin and then looking at a, under the microscope and then you're trying to quantify what you see under the microscope, that can be very tricky. And, uh, you know, and that's as someone who's, you know, worked in a research lab and, and done micro, microscope related studies. And now you've got to look at visual differences between, you know, a few samples. It's, it's a challenge. So. With that in mind, we can see that basically in the second study. Again, randomized controlled trial. This was looking at astaxanthin supplementation uh, in, in response to UV-induced skin deterioration in healthy people, right? So what they gave was a more physiological dose of uh, astaxanthin, which four milligrams per day, as I mentioned, isn't a crazy amount of salmon for 10 weeks. And just going into that idea of, of um, you know, tricky to quantify vis visually, right? So this is the skin swelling. The rectangles are the skin swelling in response to the UV induced uh, exposure. So they made the skin, you know, uh, swelling. It's it's called areth erythema. I'm probably mispronouncing it, which is basically just skin, you know, redness and swelling. So this was before treatment, right? Uh, placebo and astaxanthin, and then placebo, uh, you know, post post treatment, post post placebo treatment, and then astaxanthin post placebo treatment. So if you're going to quantify if you just look at it visually, you'll, you could say, all right, well, dark red, light red, you know, darker red, lighter red. But, you know, then is the magnitude in the astaxanthin group 
better than the what happened versus placebo? Because if you look at it, it looks like there is some improvement in less swelling in the placebo group too. So this is the emphasis on may improve skin health. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily convinced yet. I'd probably place my biggest bet on, on topical, as I mentioned, but I'd like to see more studies, um, you know, for astaxanthin on skin health going forward. But then where it may get more interesting is that there's a recently published study coming from the ITP, which is a gold standard of lifespan related studies, at least in mice. And that's because they, they look at um, supplementation in a few different test sites and use a very large sample size to evaluate lifespan, potential lifespan related effects. So it's not a sample size of 10 mice versus 10 mice placebo versus supplement. It's like, you know, 200 plus mice per group across a few test sites. So uh, when pooling the data, and this is data in males, it didn't work in female mice on the same diets for the same duration. When looking at median survival, this is 0.5 survival. That's the time when half the mice have died and half are still alive. When compared with the controls, which are in red, the astaxanthin treated male mice, you can see that there's a significant shift to the right. So a significant increase in median lifespan. If you look at maximal lifespan, so you can look at, you know, 20% survival here. Um, there looks like there's a significant lengthening there too, where it's pushed out, you know, a little bit. Uh, I didn't, I didn't look in to see if ma uh, maximum lifespan was impacted. I like to look at 10% survival. So when 10% of the mice are still alive, and if we do that, it looks like there's, you know, they're basically overlapped curves, at least in terms of median survival at, and in mice seems to be promising. So with that in mind, I've cut down on my salmon, uh, sardine intake, and I've started to add wild caught salmon, uh, to about a 50, 50 approach. So now I'm cooking it about once a week or once every two weeks, you know, uh, and then pre-packaging it. Uh, and then, you know, eating that over for, for, for a few days, maybe it's more of a 40, 60 still sardines. So I don't know what's optimal, but some probably better than none, whether that could impact median, median lifespan or could impact skin aging and health. I don't know, but some probably better than none.